I said about three months ago that I was gonna start a channel. Three months, that's actually really rude. And it's just not acceptable, it's really not. There's no excuse for it. You know, I could sit here and say I've been busy, but so is Beyonce and she is shaking her leg on tour right now. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Olivia Hawkins and you may recognize me off the latest season of Love Island UK. But anyway, today we're gonna get to know me, okay? I thought for the first video, do I do it Love Island related? Do I do it just about me? And I thought, you guys have already seen from interviews, from podcasts I've done, you pretty much know everything. Well. Um, but yeah, you pretty much know a lot, so I just thought there's no point in going back over it in my first video. Get comfy, grab a cup of tea, grab an whatever floats your boat. I've got my iced coffee with sugar-free caramel this time. I normally have hazelnut, but sugar-free caramel is all I could find and mm. um so yeah sit back strap in let's get into the video so I feel like the first question has to be the most asked which was what was your job before you went on Love Island before I went on to Love Island I was an actress and performer and then I did ring girling on the side um so yeah my day-to-day -day life was different every day. I'd be doing commercials, television work. And the year leading up to the show, I did some amazing jobs. I did a commercial for the World Cup. I did one for Amazon Prime. I did um, a series called Queens of Mystery where I played a trophy wife and that was on Acorn TV and Channel 5. I've done scenes in James Bond. Very, very, very small feature as a waitress, but I still was on set and it's absolutely incredible to even say I was around Daniel Craig. Like I was on that set of James Bond and yeah that was such an incredible moment um i also did a series called please like on bbc3 directed by simon bird the amazing will from in between us i literally love him i love in between us anything comedy related so when i found out he was the director i was like oh my god this is such a pinch me moment i'm gonna delve into my career before in another video and just really chat about everything I've done, like auditions and stuff. Um, yeah, that was my job before, actress and performer. Right, next question. So, loads of you were so, so interested in my ring girling and like what fights I've done and stuff. And honestly, I, right, we need to get into it because I absolutely loved being a ring girl. So, we'll start with, how did you get into ring girling? So, how did I get into ring girling? When I first graduated from my degree, I was approached on Instagram by my lovely agent, Sarah, and she said, have you ever been interested in ring girling? And I was like, what is that? I didn't really know, like I knew about grid girls and stuff, but I didn't know that ring girls were still a thing. So I had a little look on her page, saw like the match room, um, all the big fights at like O2 Arena, Manchester. And I was like, whoa, this is lit. Like I need to get involved in this. But I was kind of like nervous. I thought, oh, am I gonna be good? Like. I don't know. So I basically just sent her off my um, photos. Sarah was like, yep, great. A few days later, she said, I really want to fly you out to Germany. And I was like, what for my first fight? But obviously I was so excited. I think this was the first time I'd flown by myself though. And I was meeting up with one of my really close friends now, Alyssa, but we'd actually never met. So I was like, oh my goodness, like my first fight I'm gonna be doing, I've never met the other girl, but let me just throw myself in, put myself out of my comfort zone and yeah, just do it. So I flew to Germany. I was a ring girl for, um, it was a Saul and Bros. So it was a big fight. 
Um, so yeah, me and Alyssa both did our first fight together and it was honestly incredible. I still remember it to this day, the funnest trip ever. It was actually like snowing a little bit out there. It was so beautiful. I can't remember the exact place in Germany that we went, but yeah. Anyway, so that was my first fight. Um, and then it just went from there. Like the following week I went to Sweden. And then later on that year, I actually did the biggest fight I've ever done, which leads on to my next question. Do you see how I did it there? We're really good at this, aren't we? Which was, what is the biggest boxing fight you've been a ring girl for? So the biggest fight I've been a ring girl for is KSI versus Logan Paul. It was their first ever fight, Manchester Arena. Oh my goodness. Me and my agent, Sarah, actually did it together, just the two of us. The atmosphere was absolutely insane. And the fact that it was all live on YouTube, like normally for fights, they cut the ring girls out as much as they can. <laughs> they don't want us on television. But yeah, no, they cut us out. Um, I don't think on purpose, but when each round's finished they pan back to the round before and show little clips so you don't really get to see us that often on like matchroom and stuff so yeah everything was live so everyone that was watching it saw me i was getting so many messages like oh my god is that you and i was like what how can you see me because i didn't realize it was live um but that was such a fun fight i remember we went back and forth between each round and had little shots um just to calm the nerves because it was crazy but yeah there was like a free bar that we could access because we had access all areas so we were just making the most of it basically um oh that takes me back honestly such a good fight i can't actually remember who won i want to say ksi won but it's so long ago now. I think it was like 2018. But yeah, to go from starting ring girling the beginning of that year and then to have the opportunity to do that fight, like that was absolutely insane. And yeah, I was so grateful to Sarah for even picking me and putting me forward because that was incredible. Also, these weren't questions, but for anyone that doesn't already know, I'm 28. And my star sign is a Gemini. <laughs> so yeah, I'm 28. I'm not 28. I literally just lied. I'm not 28. I'm 27. Why would I add age onto myself? It's because everyone says I'm 28. Okay. Rewind. Rewind. I am 27. I live in Brighton. And what else do you need to know? They're like the key points, I'd say. And I am... Single. So, if my future husband is watching this... What are you waiting for? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. I'm one of four. I am second youngest, so I've got a younger brother. He is 17. I've got an older sister. She is 30. And then my older brother, he is... Don't kill me, Lloyd. I think he's 33. Is he 33? Middle child syndrome. <laughs> They're very supportive of me and vice versa. But yeah, they were so supportive of me while I was on the show. I didn't actually tell my older two siblings that I was going on the show. I only told my younger brother because he's always around my mum and dad, so I couldn't really avoid it. But yeah, I didn't tell my two older siblings. Sorry if you're watching this, love you. Um, but yeah, I left them a really long video before I left, just explaining everything. I just wanted it to be a nice surprise, you know, but saying that, I think my sister knew all along because I really wasn't throwing subtle hints. They were very, very obvious hints. Um, I remember I messaged her and I was like, can you order me some bikinis from this website? Because 
for some reason my account was like not working properly she was like why do you need loads of swimwear for january like where are you going and i was like oh i think i'm going to dubai like i haven't booked it yet she was like are you going on love island and i was like no absolutely not like you would know if i was going on love island she was like okay whatever so then <laughs> on christmas day i remember i was getting a bit confident with it and i was like oh well maybe you guys will see me on screen a lot more in january but they're used to seeing me and stuff anyway and then i remember my sister and her husband ben looked at each other and they were like and i was like oh no i think they knew she says now that she just had a feeling um but yeah it was a massive surprise for them anyway you guys need to get used to me rambling on basically because I can't answer a question in less than two minutes. So this is why I'm saying get a cup of tea because you're gonna be here for a while. Favorite clothing brand. So it honestly changes and I have so many. Right, in the villa, I was wearing a lot of like rat and boa. I'm gonna go with like the you know, the more expensive but still affordable occasion brands. Um, so Rat & Boa, House of CB, O Poly, they're like my three, and Mistress Rocks as well. Those were definitely the four I dipped between a lot in the villa. And then also I love PLT, I love Boohoo, Boohoo Man, oh, I love Boohoo Man tracksuits. I just love men's tracksuits in general, but Boohoo Man ones are just so cool. Um, don't know if I'm cool enough to wear them, but yeah, I love them. I also love Prada, but the budget, the daily budget, it just doesn't really sit. If I'm gonna spend my money, it needs to be something I really want. Like I really have to love the bag. I have to think about it for a long time. Um, although I made a bit of a splurge the other day on some perfume and the only reason I got it is because I've actually wanted it for years. My friend Nahida's always had it and when she told me the price I was like, for perfume? And um, yeah, me and my friend were in Selfridges the other day and her friend kindly said, would you like to buy anything today? Like I've got my discount on me because she works there. Like, is there anything you want to get? Let me know. And I was like, oh, I really want the Creed Aventus perfume. Like, I've wanted it for ages. She was like, just do it. And I was like, oh. But it's so expensive. I say it should last me. The rate I spray myself. It's not going to last me. Longer than six months. If that, but yeah, I'm so happy I purchased it. But again, that was something I've wanted for a very, very, very long time. I hope your tea hasn't got cold, by the way, if any of you are drinking tea. I know I ramble on, but wouldn't you rather get in-depth answers than quick ones? I always prefer that. I hate it when people do Q&As and you're like, so what was your job? And they're like, a nail tech. And then they just move on to the next, like, no i want to know like what was your favorite shape to do was it almond or was it ballerina or was it coffin like i want to know the ins and outs of your job um so yeah hope that the in-depth answers are floating your boat So then for my A-levels, I was actually debating whether to go off and study musical theatre or to stay and do my A-levels. Um, obviously, I was 16 at the time. I still felt quite young. I always knew in my heart that musical theatre was what I wanted to do. You know, I was in the West End when I was 11. I was in Billy Elliot um, at the Palace Theatre for a year 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 and a half um so i always knew that you know musical theater performing it was in my blood it's it's always what i've wanted to do but 16 i just felt quite young um i went to look at a couple of places i went to arts ed mount view um incredible places but i just remember looking around and feeling quite 
overwhelmed and I had a discussion with my parents and I just thought, you know, the best thing for me to do right now is to get my A-levels, make sure I have a backup plan and I'm so glad that I did this because I just think if I ever wanted to go off and do anything else, I, I always have that in my pocket. So yeah, for my A-levels I did maths, law, psychology and English language. I'm not just a pretty face, I do have a brains. <laughs> no, but I worked very hard. I can't believe I chose maths. If you're watching this and you are studying your A-levels right now and you're doing maths, honestly, I feel for you and well done for even picking it because it is hard. I just remember I chose it because my older brother and sister both did maths. They're both very, very, very clever. I'd say I'm clever, but I'm not as clever as them. It doesn't come to me as naturally and I do get quite distracted easily so I don't like sitting down memorising stuff for tests. Like tests were never for me. I was much more creative. Like I had a maths tutor, Sue. Oh, she's so cute. Miss her. She was so good but I literally had to have her every single week for my A-levels in order to get a decent um, grade. It's great. Wait, grade sounds really American. Is that what we say here in England? Grade. Grade. I think I got a C for maths because it was just so hard. Um, I was really good at law, actually. <laughs> so who knows, maybe one day I'll be a lawyer and I could be fighting your corner in the courtroom. Wouldn't you absolutely love that? Psychology, I feel like I'd enjoy psychology a bit more now, just because I find that kind of subject really interesting. No, I don't. I literally just lied. Does anyone else do that, where they tell white lies? <laughs> this is me. So another frequently asked question was, did you go to uni? If so, what did you study? Yes, I did go to university. I went to, I call it a dance college. I still did a degree. Um, it was called Bird College where I studied dance and musical theater. Honestly, the best three years of my life. So much fun. But yeah, I was on the degree course, so I did the practical as well as the written um, and I had to do a dissertation in my third year. 8,000 words, oh, I still remember it. Honestly, horrendous, but amazing. Got through it, what an achievement. I think I got a 2-1, I didn't get a first, but I got a 2-1, still very good. Um, yeah, and I just had the best time. When I was auditioning, I actually was very, very, very lucky to get on the degree course. I know now things are very different. Um, they take on quite a lot more people. They have the facilities to have a couple of hundred on the degree. But when I was on the degree course, I think there was only about 40 or 50 of us, um, including girls and boys. So yeah, to get on that degree course, I was very lucky and yeah. It's actually a funny story to tell you. In my third year, I auditioned for a very big West End show. Um, my agent from the college, she represented all of us before we got agents ourselves, you know, when we graduated. And she put me forward and I got to the finals. And I was like, wow, I could potentially actually get this role. Unfortunately, I didn't get it, but it was an amazing experience. And I always just think back now, oh, if I'd have got that role, would I have just stayed in theatre and in musicals? But then I never would have gone on and done the things I did in television. So I feel like everything happens for a reason. But yeah, I'd love to delve into that in another video and tell you guys what musical it was. So see if you can guess in the comments what musical you think it was. 
I was actually up for a role to play one of the friends. Not that that gives anything away, but um, might be a musical to do with the A to the B to the B to the A. What is the next one? Oh, I quite like this one. I know we're not delving into Love Island, but I did have to include this one because I feel like it was a very, very good question. Do you prefer your life before or after Love Island? I saw this question and I thought, oh, wow, hmm, that's deep. And I feel like my answer now is so different to how it would have been if I'd have filmed this straight after coming out of the villa because, yeah, I probably would have said in the first two weeks coming out, I'd have said absolutely I prefer my life before. I'm definitely so much happier now. Like, I'm probably the happiest I've been in a long time um since coming out i wouldn't say i'm completely back to the place i was before it's gonna take me some adjusting um but we're gonna get there but yeah this question it really did hit me i just thought what a great question like do i prefer my life before or do i prefer my life after in terms of like work and stuff it's not that different because my life was very fast paced anyway I've always been self-employed. My days are very sporadic. It's very, you know, I'd be on set from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. I'd work weekends. I never really had a clock off moment and it's the same now. But yeah, I definitely, you know, I liked my life before and I like it now. I wouldn't say I prefer either or. You know, when I just came out of the villa, I would have said absolutely I prefer my life before. But now, I'd say I like both. What did a day in the life look like for you before Love Island? So obviously I've already said I was an actress, performer. Um, my life was pretty much different every day, every week. If I was on a series for a few weeks, then that was better because I kind of had more of a routine. Um, I'd be living out of hotels because a lot of my work was up in London and I still live in Brighton and I did at the time so I'd be commuting but yeah my days would pretty much consist of me normally waking up very early so sometimes 2, 3 a.m driving up to London to get to set for 5 a.m, 6 a.m I'd go straight into hair and makeup, which I'd be in for a few hours, and then I would get onto set of whatever job I was doing. And I literally loved it. I was constantly tired, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. And then at weekends, if I had a day off, I would basically make sure I go for a nice long walk, um, 10K steps, you know, put my headphones on, zone out, listen to music, do a little gym session. I'm so blessed I've actually got a gym in my garden. So I'd go outside in the morning, do a incline walk, a little run, and then do like a little um, Pilates session on YouTube. There's a lady called Move With Nicole and I do a lot of her videos. I love them because they're so quick and they're free. But that actually leads me on to the final question, which I'm gonna do a whole video about. But how did you lose the weight before going on Love Island? So, as you guys know that follow me on Instagram, I've been very open about the weight I lost before going into the villa. I actually lost 10 kg over the time period of about four or five months. It sounds like a lot, and it is quite a lot. Um, I have a few transitional photos and when I look back, I'm like, wow, I'm so proud of myself. And obviously my amazing PT Lloyd, he is so good at his job. He's got an online coaching system now. So literally you can train with him from wherever you are. He sets everything up for you, all your workouts, all your food everything you need 
he gave me a set plan of everything my calories you know we decrease them gradually over time safely so that I could reach my goal weight which I did and I was absolutely never hungry I was always getting sufficient amount and yeah I'm going to do a whole nother video I'm going to include my coach into it just so I can help you guys out there thank you so much for joining me for this video and here is the start of my journey on youtube and please subscribe come along with me subscribe comment like all of that stuff i think you have to turn on the notification bell as well i've heard that before so i'm just repeating it and i will see you guys in the next video love you guys